media buying models basically it's it's how advertising platforms charge you you pay per result so every time that you advertise on facebook on google on youtube you only pay them for certain results and what those results are i'm, I'm about to discuss the most popular buying model um, is cpm or cost per 1,000 impression. So M is the uh, Roman numeral for 1,000, if you didn't know that, that's grade school. It's the most popular buying model because it most resembled how um, billboards and TV channels used to sell their advertisement. So in the, in the olden days, um, when you were to buy a, let's say a placement in the billboard, uh, the, the company that owned the billboard would tell you, hey, um, on average, you're, you're getting about 100,000 eyeballs on, on our advertisements. And we charge you X amount for every 100,000, right? And if you're going to do it five times so this week, or let's say five months, uh, it's five months times the 100,000 uh, impressions. So that's what uh, Facebook and YouTube and Google took away from the traditional media. And this is the equivalent now, cost per 1,000 impressions. This is the typical model. You pay for how many times an ad was seen. So you're only charged if a customer sees your ad. More impressions, and, now, and, here's, the, okay, and here's the important bit. More impressions on your advertisements typically mean, means your ad is more relevant. Because if you think about it, why would Facebook or Google or YouTube want to show their customers or users ads that are not relevant to them. Okay, so if they're seeing in their numbers that ads are not relevant to them uh, or to their customers, they're gonna, they're gonna refrain from showing your advertisement, thus having less impressions. So that's why it's important and that's why we track it. Um, typically, uh, if our campaigns are, are generating a good number of impressions, that's a good sign for us that our ad is receptive to the people that we're targeting to and Facebook and Google kind of likes what we're doing and uh, continues to allow us to advertise. So if this is still not clear in terms of impressions, my favorite analogy is this. Let's say you're going northbound uh, to EDSA, northbound EDSA, uh, and you see a billboard, right? So one of those billboards. You pass by, you go to work northbound, and you pass by there uh, once, uh, once a day, right? So every day for five days if you're working. You see that billboard five times a week, that counts as five impressions, even if you're just one person. So I can see the same ad a couple of different times uh, a week and all of those times that I see it would count as impressions but I count as one person and so uh, I could talk a little bit more about how um, this is also a little subjective because you know you could just browse it through your your screen and technically Facebook will count it as an impression but uh, that those technicalities it's probably for some it's probably better to talk about them for some other time and you just need to know that Impressions are the number of times an ad was seen, and theoretically, people can see your ad uh, several times. Cost per view, so that's CPV. This is the buying model for many video view campaigns. So if you're running ads on YouTube or you're running Facebook ads with your videos, this is what you pay for. You pay for the views. Now, uh, again, I, I don't want to be able to talk about um, the huge differences right now, but just so that you know, Typically, Facebook, you pay either for every three seconds that a uh, cost, uh, uh, customer will watch your video or 15 seconds, which is called through plays. That's the, uh, that's the term for it. Um, why they track three seconds, I honestly don't know. It's not my favorite metric. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, we usually cap ourselves earliest at 15 seconds, which is the through play uh, metric. Um, just because, again, that's... That at least encourages me to know that um, that our customers or our audience, you know, started watching our videos. For YouTube, it's typically six seconds. Um, if you've ever seen a YouTube ad, right, and then um, you see after a few seconds you're able to skip, an advertiser gets charged every time you complete those uh, those five seconds. So yeah, if you if you see a competitor, <laughs> just let them run so that they get charged for it. That's not what I do. Um, next metric is uh, it, it's called cost per click, and this is one of the more I think this is this is one of the more prominent ones uh, that you'll you'll probably um, see or interact with a lot. 
Cost per click, very basically, it's how much you're charged for every click. This is especially this is especially prominent on Google ad platforms. This is their uh, this is their I'd say their anchor in terms of a buying model. And basically, here you pay for how many times your ad was clicked and how uh, how much traffic you were brought. So if they click your link, they go to your website. That's typically how they pay for. Uh, that's typically what you pay for. Now again, there there are several layers of nuances that you could probably do here. Um, but just again, for simplicity's sake, just understand that CPC, your cost per click, you're basically just paying every time a customer clicks your ad. Um, and this is typically measured by another metric, um, which I won't talk about. Uh, I, I which I won't talk about anymore later on. But just so that you guys know, it's called click through rate. So it's a it's the percentage of people who saw your ad. And how many people clicked it? Now, this is really important, and 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 the reason why cost per click is such a prominent uh, buying model, it's because that typically your click through rates uh, they will range from anywhere between 0.5 percent all the way to like 5 percent. So you're really looking at a small margin of people who are clicking your uh, ads and going to your website, and that's why for advertisers like me, I'm willing to pay for those clicks. Because those, that small percentage of people, they're most likely the people that I want to speak to. I mean, obviously, I'd like to speak to everyone. But the reality is, I'm not going to be engaging to everyone. I'm not going to be relevant to everyone. Just, just that select few. Just that 0.5 to 5% on average few. And I want to make sure that I pay for those results. Uh, I pay for those clicks. So, so that's why it's important. Now, uh, Conversions, uh, they can be divided into two kinds of categories. And uh, this is the simplest way to look at it. You have your cost per lead. This is the buying model typically for B2B or services, bis services businesses. So for example, for us, this is how we track our advertisements, our ad budget, how much are we paying per lead. So this is, this is the metric. And uh, you measure this by how many prospects you're able to generate online. Now, Okay, this is, this is where it gets a little subjective. Um, your cost per lead could mean different things for your business. So for simpler situations, for example, uh, a cost per lead could just be, uh, sorry, a lead could just be someone who answers your contact us form and, and sends that email out. That's a lead for me. But in our instance, for example, so if you go to our website, there are so many layers to be able to reach us. So, so for example, our Bounce Back Blueprint page, our, our Google Ads page, our Contact Us page, our free audit page. There are so many kinds of leads. So we're, we're, uh, we're, we're able to track how much we're paying for leads for very specific services. So that's a decision that we made because we want to be able to measure our costs better. But you know, for simplicity's sake, you could just have it all into one, uh, one metric, which is just very simply your cost per lead. Now, cost per acquisition, this is the primary buying model for e-commerce businesses. Now, the difference here is that for the cost per lead model, they typically don't finish that transaction online. Okay, so let's say, for example, uh, for, uh, for Husky, we don't, we don't finish that transaction online. They reach out to us, we prospect them, we sign a contract, and then they pay us via check or online uh, payments or, or bank deposits. Um, I'm not able to track that whole payment uh, journey after. So I'm not able to associate uh, my ROI easily with my cost per lead model. But with my cost per acquisition, this is typically the model again assigned to uh, e-commerce businesses. You're able to see that whole journey, right? From the first interaction all the way to, make, to when they make that online purchase. And that's really, really powerful stuff because now you're able to check um, how much you're paying for for every conversion you're able to generate. So um, this, is, this is great because let's say, for example, for us, uh, whenever we do talk to clients, how we like to have these conversations after we start running ads is that, okay, client, uh, last month, we only paid 50 pesos per conversion. So we only paid 50 bucks on average and they generated a total number of X revenue. And then what we would do together is we would, we would look at the numbers and then the client would tell me, okay, Mickey, let's double the budget and let's try to make sure that we're only paying 50 pesos to acquire that customer. 
Um, if you guys didn't know, there's so much that goes into getting a customer. Right? So for example, for us, um, all of the spend that we're doing so far with um, our online advertising, uh, the Facebook ads that we're running, the Google search ads that we're running, all of that adds up. Okay? And you know, that costs money. And the, the, the CPA as a business model, it allows me to see if my, my marketing activities are profitable. So let's say, for example, let's say your cost per acquisition is, let's say, 500 pesos. That's crazy high, right? That's a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm basically telling you, you you're going to have to churn out 500 pesos for every new customer that you want. But if that customer is bringing me in 1,500 pesos in terms of profit, that's not bad, right? And having that conversation is super important because you're able to manage your finances better. Okay, last metric, uh, very simply, it's the conversion rate. It's the percentage of typically website traffic that is converted into a sale or a lead. So this could either be the leads that you generated or the, through the CPL or the new customers that you acquired, which is the CPA. Benchmarks here will vary, guys. It will vary, but typically you're looking at 1% to 5% on average. So that's, it, that's really just the game. Your, all the effort that you bring that you make into bringing people into your website, it all just boils down to that one to 5% of people that end up becoming your customers. And this is just on average. Sometimes you'll go lower than this. Uh, in, good, uh, in really great situations, you will go higher than that. 